All right, all right, all right. It's eight o'clock. We about to go and get into this. Turn down this Ella May in the background. Her album is dope. Yeah, She's really talented. It's, it's LMI. LMI. Ella May, yeah. LMI. Same thing. I've been saying Ella May the whole time. It's LMI. All right, I'm incorrect. It. LMI, my bad. LMI album dope, though. It's cool. I'm feeling it. Dope little, dope little joint. Right? Yeah, so anyways, it's your boy, J.D. Costa. And it is your girl, Katniss. And together we are the Nitty Gritty. Look, we're here today. Um, got a couple of things we're going to talk about. Um, got a, I had this conversation with quite a few people during the week. And uh, so we definitely want to talk about um, terrorism in America. Like, and, and what and what is the scope, what is the face of terrorism that we're really dealing with? You know, like, what's the kind of stuff that we should, we should be policing? Won't spend a whole lot of time there. We've talked about it before, but definitely want to, like, just focus just on that. Um, then, definitely want to talk about spanking that came out. And actually, it's been brought up in a lot of conversations recently about, you know, whether spanking is good or bad. You know, disciplining our children. Um, so, we're going to talk about that. And then... Um, we're going to bless you. Thank and then uh, we're going to talk about um, people changing their race. You know what I'm saying? And this, I, I definitely want to talk about that. Um, there was some IG models that was outed. Um, I forget. Uh, my homegirl Kim posted the article recently. Um, I've seen some stuff on, um, face, uh, on my Facebook and on my IG feed, feeds. I've seen some stuff on Twitter about it as well. So, yeah, we definitely want to get in there and talk about the... Um, um, all that. So, uh, so, Kat, you know, I've been talking a lot about nationalism, um, but then, you know, this terrorism thing is crazy. Um, you, didn't you say, like, what, one of the reality people, or one of the folks in them talk shows, they had someone die from the shooting in California, didn't they? Yeah, the sister, sister. You know what I'm talking about? T and Tamir? Yeah, which one? Tamir. Her Tamir. Okay. husband's niece died in oh, Thousand wow. Oaks. That's horrible. Yeah. She was a freshman at Pepperdine University, so they finally confirmed her body, and she was one of the victims. Dang. And I mean, like, see, that's the that's the crazy thing about this whole terrorism thing is that, you know, I don't know why they won't label it terrorism. It's always lone shooter. And I mean, like, we know what that conversation looked like, but you know, the reason I want to call it terrorism, right? And, and look, and this is not to say that all people that look like that person that did that are terrorists. Not saying that at all. Uh, we're not saying that all white males are terrorists. I'm not saying that. But there is something to be said that we don't police or we're not quick or amped to call something terror when the, uh, when the people committing the crimes look like that. I mean, we call the Black Panther Party terrorist, right? But no one can name that one crime or thing committed where they actually committed any kind of terror. Cat, you about to fall asleep in this another today. You must have had a long day today, didn't you? I'm tired. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, um, yeah, definitely. Like, we, like, we don't call them terrorists. You know, if somebody is radicalized when it comes to their faith being Islamic, we're quick to call that terrorist, right? But then, if the person goes to a church of God in Christ or whatever and works at a Jiffy Lube, happens to be white, we're not quick to call it terrorist. And I, I don't think we should call all white men terrorists. So that's not fair uh, at all. But so they, aren't they the ones that created the definition or the at least the profile of what terrorism is in this country? They did. And so that's so, the reason why they would be biased against the truth. Yeah. So um, and then so I wanted to not call out some groups, right? Because I understand like the and th this is not saying that what Don Lemon said was wrong, right? But I do want to pinpoint and break it down since. America is so PC, right, that we have to be politically correct, then I'll call our names. So these are just groups here in America. And um, some, and most of these groups, or at some point, the, the individuals who committed these crimes in various um, circumstances, a lot the, the individuals get into fights over their political views, they fall to some of these groups. American Freedom Party, formerly known as the American Third Position Party, is an American political group which, which promotes white supremacy was founded in 2010 and is defined its principal mission as representing the political interests of white 
Americans. Um, let's see. We have the Aryan Nation that you guys are familiar with. We have the Council of Conservative Citizens. It is an American political organization that supports a large variety of conservative and paleoconservative causes in addition to white um, separatism. Um, we also have uh, groups like Cre Creative Alliance, which was formed back in 1973. We have groups like Euro, which was widely represented uh, recently when we was in Carolina. And um, you remember the, uh, the whole thing, uh, not Carolina, but Virginia. The whole situation there when a young lady died, lost her life because somebody ran the car through the middle of there. When, we was, uh, when they was, people was protesting the statue being taken down. Yeah. A lot of people were from that group Euro. Um, and that's a white separatist um, group in uh, the United States led by the former Louisiana state representative and presidential primary candidate David Duke. It was founded back in 2000. So like, you know, like we have all these groups um, doing all this stuff. Obviously the Ku, -Ku, the Ku Klux Klan, the Ku Klux Klan. And then believe it or not, Founded back in 1953, there was the National Association for the Advancement of White People. 1953 founded. Not now, where they feel like we're taking their country, even though uh, white still represents 51% of America. And because of... Past, I just think they, they cre like, there's no need for them to create... No. Create 1953. December 14, 1953. I think they created it because the NAACP was created and they wanted to be a complete donkey. That's what I think. Yeah, and I mean, and there's a bunch of organizations here um, that support that. And then another one that's even more so violent that was created not too long ago, it's one called, um, it's called like The Boys or something like that. What? What? Who is it? Oh, I just had it low in the background. I ain't couldn't have really hear it, but all right, I'll turn it all the way down. So, um, yeah, so you have that group and they're like, and they actually believe violence first to push their causes. I think what bothers me is that I don't see a lot of these groups um, being accosted by the police or I don't see them on the FBI's radar. Um, yeah, remember that, remember that guy, that article that went around on Facebook? He was a black guy. I guess he was a um, pro-black dude, was teaching people in the community how to shoot and stuff, and they arrested him. Yeah, and I mean... And they called him a, a terrorist. Yeah, because whenever the person is a minority or of a different hue, or of a different background that isn't Western or Anglo-Saxon, it becomes terrorized as it's, uh, and then, and I think the reason why no one wants to call the acts of Dylan Roof, or the guy that shot up Aurora, um, Colorado, or the situation we just had here in California, or Parkland and all these different, they don't want to call these people terrorists, or the gentleman in Kentucky who says, hey, don't worry, I don't shoot white people, that's what he told one of the, that's what one of the people witnessed him saying, or whatever like they don't want to call that terrorism because then you have to start once you say what a thing is you have to start identifying how to fix it right well not only that but by calling it terrorism that means that now they will be identified as a threat or something negative to society for a long time anything white when you look in the dictionary white is considered pure white is considered nice white is mm -hmm. considered right look in the dictionary black or anything dark it's considered, you know, negative. It's considered devilish. It's considered yep. evil. So now it, it kind of deconstructs all that, Amer that America had constructed as being white and being right and being the best. Exactly. And so by calling a thing a thing, now it's like, wait a minute. This whole time, white people were known to be the cream of the crop, the best, the right. They don't have no harm. Just, you know, spotless. And now mm -hmm. we have to actually identify them as Threats to society? Yeah. They don't want to do that? No, and I think that, uh, and I think people have to really come to grips with this conversation because what they don't realize is, is that um, people are in a position where they're upset. Um, things are becoming heightened. And that, so also to call a thing a thing would be you have to start confronting things like the president who antagonizes these situations. He thinks he, it's funny. Yeah, but it's not funny. It's not funny when somebody's son is going to get beat up out there in the streets for something crazy or someone's son may die. And guess what? Someone's son may not be always white. It may be something else. You know what I'm saying? Because you're antagonizing of something, something for something to come down to physicality. And we, we got to cut the crap at the end of the day. Definitely got to cut the crap. It's blowing me. So, um, you know, last week we talked about 
um, nationalism, the dangers of that, and that mindset. I, for those that didn't check it out, you can go to our YouTube channel and check that, and I would hope that you do. But yeah, we definitely got to do something about that uh, conversation. We need to keep calling it what it is. I'm going to encourage anyone who took, part, to, um, took place in the vote, if you believe in it, I don't care if you're white, black, whatever, um, Christian, non-Christian, gay, straight, whatever, you should be going to your lawmakers and breaking and bringing this up. Because we have to start calling out anybody who would bring or try to destroy harmony in what our communities can be. In the small world that we're becoming, in this internet age, the world is becoming smaller. And people have to learn how to start dealing with each other. And I would say you guys need to push your lawmakers into creating laws that's going to like root out hate. And no matter what form it comes in, we can't say we, we can't police the hood when they kill each other because we understand black on black crime is still wrong when it happens right and guess what some will argue, some will argue there's no such thing well i mean no it happens you know what i'm saying but everybody commits crime in their own neighborhood my thing is though when the crime is coming in the hood what do they do police get involved somebody goes to jail first 48 somebody always snitch my issue is we got to have that same energy when whenever hate is created if it's if it's hate amongst people, or even if it's hate coming from one person, shooting up a bunch of folks just because I'm some weird ideology that he heard from an echo chamber. Well, then, you gotta take care of it. Well, this takes me to my next point then. So, do you think that people who are shooting things up, that it has something to do from a lack of discipline? Well, I mean, you, you, it makes you wonder, right? Um, now, we've seen what over-discipline does and what, what those that create, but then a lack of discipline creates a terror, too. And then, like, yeah, it does bring us up to the next point, which is spanking. A lot of people have been saying, I mean, it's been in the news. Um, I forgot which um, organization said it, and I don't want to misquote it, so I'm not going to just randomly throw something out there. But they had put out that their studies were saying that spanking shouldn't be used anymore. But studies show that 7 out of 10 parents still believe in corporal punishment. For a reason, because it works. I mean, it just does. Um, someone that I had studied early on when I was a young father was James Dobson. And he talked about the balance between um, discipline and love, right? And you got to have both. I think something that we see in our community sometimes is um, it's, it's out of balance. Like, especially like in a, like a single mother household, right? Sometimes we'll see sometimes too much love. And that happens because um, mm -hmm. if, if that one parent is working, a long long hours and can't really see their kids they feel like shower showering them with gifts and giving them things sometimes things they don't deserve to have because they, they feel bad about not spending time so they spend too much money but then you have some situations where I know folks who've had parents that was just you know wound too tight or just too strict and they book you for every little thing yeah and, 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 I, and that's not balance so you I gotta think, have a balance between the two and I think a lot of black parents I think that the reason why we think Correction and discipline comes from spanking or beating is because I think it was passed down from slavery. Period. Point blank. I think that we thought in order for something to be somebody to, to understand or comprehend, this is the right way. That is how we were treated when we were slaves, and I think we we passed it down from slavery. Then I think the generation before us, our parents' generation, was like kind of kind of lax, and our generation is just like I feel like our generation tries to become friends with their kids. It's like overcorrecting. But I will say this, you know, spanking and all, and, that, and all of that, it's not just a black phenomenon. We get the jokes about it because, you know, you hear about the switch, you hear about the instinction cords, and it does feel reminiscent of the kind of beatings that people might have took in slavery, right? You know, you talk about getting an extension cord and wearing that against somebody's back. I mean, like, you literally throwing stripes on their back, like welts, like... Anybody, especially in our community, we joke about those kind of whoopings, but let, like, but we can't. It doesn't just stop there. Um, in Irish communities, uh, you see it a lot in Italian communities as well, where those people in those communities um, experience harsh beatings and stuff like that by the hands of their parents. You know, um, yeah, so, I'm not, not going to say that we're the only community, but I am mm -hmm. going to say that we are a community that definitely spanks. And the other community, when I'm out at shopping. I see those kids hitting their parents, calling their parents bees and MFs and dumb. And I can tell you, every black person, when we see it, our eyes meet each other like this. And we know it's called for, child, if you, that was my kid or if that was in your family, that kid wouldn't have made it out of Target alive, mm -hmm. more than likely. Not saying they would have died, but they would have died. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and look, it works. I used to get that speech before we used to went into before we went into Walmart or wherever we was going. Don't you embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Don't touch nothing. Don't, don't ask, ask for nothing. nothing. Don't look at nothing. I mean, your parents pretty much want you to go into the store like this. You know what I'm saying? Like this. That you know, like. But then, but then you see other cultures. I'm trying to tell you, they be having tantrums. They be throwing stuff down. Like, no, I said no, mom. And they be like three, and they'll literally slap their parents. And I get that they're like kids. So, but that's a prime age where I feel like correction is essential. But what do I know? I'm not a parent, and I don't want some of these little parents out here coming for me. So I'm gonna leave it to the parent. But okay. I will, I will say this, like just my own personal experience, and then from books I've read. Um, Corporal punishment does work. There is a time and a place for it. Um, but one thing I want to put out there be before someone thinks that this is a license to be like L Bill and your children, you know, WW Night, you know, Monday Night Raw, DDT, and then a child or something like that. It don't take all that. I think that um, based off of what I read and from a personal experience, if you whoop on a child and you're in an angry place, that's not good because that's that's what you're giving off. I think what helps is for one, the parent has to be calm, right? Right. Because you got to understand, like the child, it, it's still a child, and their 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 mind is still maturing. That mind, will, that frontal cortex, won't even mature until twenty five anyway. But what you're trying to do is instill into them the best way to manage themselves and manage themselves going forward. So a lot of it is the talking and giving them the why as to why they can't fall out in the middle of the floor. Why they can't act in any kind of way they want to. Why they can't steal. Why there's a such thing as having an inside voice. All these things, they take part. And I think, like, me personally, I'm not going to be whooping nobody for no 30 minutes. Um, when the That's kids are smaller, time. you know what I'm saying, you pop them on the hand one time, maybe three times. Uh, tell them if they, if you keep on moving, I'm going to pop you one more additional time. But there's time out. Kids are older now. I believe in, like, you know, push-ups, <laughs> flutter kicks, you know. I could wear somebody out and not put a single hand on you. And listen, it ain't necessarily a bad idea because then at least you know your kids are going to be in shape. Look, either they're going to be really smart or they're going to be really strong, one or the other. But you will, <laughs> not, you will not be dumb a week in my house. You get what I'm saying? Like, And I think what happens with that is by doing that, once again, it's not to be mean to the child or to belittle the child. It's so that way they understand, like, look, you can't do this. And, um, and I explain to my kids all the time, especially, like, I'll tell my son, you know, like, if I have to have a conversation with him, like, look, I get it. It don't seem fair right now, but unfortunately, the world, you're going to be a black man one day. And we've seen through the news that black men don't have to do a whole lot to get shot by the authorities. So what may seem like harmless and an overreaction to unruly behavior at times, because all kids do it at some point. Mine's a super smart Amazing, beautiful, but every now and then they get in a little unruly, and you have to correct unruly early because at 18, 21, 25, it's too late to correct unruly. And unfortunately, at that point, you can't be out there trying to whoop no kid, and ain't nobody, ain't no grown person at that point going to sit nobody tell them to do some push ups. So you have to install it in them early while they respect you enough to listen, and then they take that respect outside their house. Because guess what? In the real world, <clears throat> why a lot of people say they don't believe in spanking? Let's consider why, um, how we answer questions in the, in the real world. You don't pay your bills time, what happens? You get bad credit. You can't get a place to live. So the world spanks you different kind of ways. You don't do your work on time, what happens to you? You get fired. And you work at a very prestigious place, right? And they put a lot of work on you. I mean, thank goodness that your parents did right by you. You know what I'm saying? But so you know how to follow rules and direction and not act unruly in the workplace. I don't think the place that you work at would tolerate an unruly Katrina Hawkins. I just don't see that happening. Probably not. Yeah. So, I mean, it all works out to his benefit. You know, big up uh, Mike and Jen for you. You know what I'm saying? But, um, like, yeah, I think, I think spanking and all that works. And I think what happened in our generation is we overcorrected. We didn't like the, you know, the water hoses, the, 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 the broomsticks, the extension cords, the switches, uh, Who's mama's sandals. Who's spanked by a water hose? If you've been spanked by a water hose out there, please comment on this video. Let I don't Katrina know, know that's anybody real. that got spanked by that's a water That's a real hose. phenomenon. People get spanked by water hoses, all right? I know y'all out there. I know we got some people watching right now. If you got spanked by a water hose, or maybe, you know, you just, maybe you're a young person still, you could probably get touched by one of those things still, then you just be suffering silence. But no, that's a real thing. And I think what happened is some people overcorrect it. And then what happened in overcorrecting, they're like, I ain't going to beat my kids at all. So then they give their kids everything they want. And now 
we have a generation of kids coming to the workplace. Spoiled. Spoiled like, and then, and the thing is, it don't end at 18. People don't become 18 to become responsible. Well, not only that, the hard work is definitely out the door. Did you hear about that young man? He was on Steve Harvey's show. He lost his UPS job, and then he didn't want to be broke, so he ended up getting a job being a mover. Okay. And um, the place Expected that he had work. to move, well, the thing is, the place he had to move was like maybe like 15, 20 miles from where he lived. So he walked. He left the house at like 10 o'clock at night. That's what's up. And walked, and then somebody that knew it from the neighborhood was like, yo, like, you've been walking for a minute, like... Do you need a ride? So the guy, I think, took him like the rest of the like maybe like the, drove him the rest of the, like six miles, and he told the woman when he got to the to the house like, yeah, I um I walked here, and she was felt so compassionate and let him go upstairs to rest for a little bit because he was tired. He walked all night for a job, and so he probably was like, man, you got that old school grit in you, you know that old school grit where you nothing's gonna hold you back from getting this money. Yeah, but, That's if you, impressive. but if you spoil a child all the time and they think everything's supposed to be handed to them, they won't develop that grit. They well, won't develop that work ethic. Well, the great thing is that the story went viral. He ended up getting twenty five. He ended up getting no, like I think sixty thousand. Oh, that's dope. Um, and then he ended up giving twenty five thousand to the organization that helped, you know, develop him as far as his business skills. So neither him nor there, he's doing great now. But to me, that was impressive because I'm not gonna lie to y'all. If y'all think I'm lazy by saying this, then y'all think I'm lazy. But I don't think I'm walking. Overnight, twenty miles, no job. Just that's just how big gonna be what I'm gonna do. But um, uh, but you know, but big up to him. <laughs> but look, work gotta come somewhere. I mean, you gotta do with what you got. And at the same time, cause like, ain't nobody parents trying to raise nobody at no thirty plus year old anyway. I get it, but walking overnight, twenty you gotta do what you gotta do. Probably wouldn't be for me. Because then you know, what if he didn't walk those miles and he decided well, I'm gonna sell drugs? You get what I'm saying? Well, yeah, that's, that's what Steve Harvey was saying. He was like, at least you get the honest way because yeah. I would have said I'm gonna do it another way. So, but I, I think discipline work. Um, what's the? Where we going next? Oh, I mean, well, next is it, funny to me. So I don't know if y'all been following this, but there's a lot of people out there that really want to be black. Yeah. I mean, not like for pretend, like not for pretend, but they like all not day for play black. Play. Not for play play. They all day blackface. I mean, they don't even think they were. They don't think they on blackface. Like they really um out here just. But is it women or is it men? Well, the story that I saw was women. I didn't yeah, see I any don't men. See too many men. I didn't see any men. You but, know what I'm saying? But, but do you I, know why women. though? Think about it. Where where are white men in position compared to everybody else in the world? I mean, even according to that date study that we did, you know, like, but a year ago. They're number one, right? Yeah. So, and then we would think to ourselves, well, white women are not too far behind. Why would they want to be, why would they want to be black? Because right now, what, what is pop culture? Pop culture is black culture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hip hop, all that. You know, run the airways. So. But it's just crazy because, like, some of them, some of them is like, all right, yeah, I could tell you just got a good tan. But some of them, they, yes, they look like they were some light skinned girls for real. Or Puerto Rican or something. Something. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't know that they was. Born with we names should, like Amy and show, Lisa. Post some of the pictures so people can see what we're talking about. You know what? That's what we're going to do. If you follow us on IG, um, and we'll put some on Facebook too, um, for all of our Facebook listeners. What's up, Nate? He said, we winning. Of course we winning. I hope you ain't referring to the Eagles, though. That, <laughs> I mean, like, we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about people out here being doing modern day blackface and changing their lips and bodies to look like black women. But my problem with it and my problem always has been is that there are said black men, there's a subset of black men, not all, but a subset of black men who will vocally say they don't mess with black women, yada, yada, yada. Then they go and they find a Kardashian, they find these wannabe black women and then they're so like mesmerizing. It's like, these are the same features. First of all, they bought these features. These are the same features that black women have. So why are you so obsessed with that? And I really do believe that there is a subset of men that have some kind of self-hate and they anything that is lighter to them is beautiful. You could look like a duck. A duck yep. and a muck. Whatever. And they just have to have something that is ambiguous and it looks... Your identity is not really... Uh, easily identified they want it to be very you know you look mixed up i want to hear from minister paul paul i hear i see you on here right how do you feel about these people who want to be everything but who they are and and, uh, and they get you caught up we was talking about all these people out here changing their color and then of course like recently, Kylie jenner and then recently don't they get they don't i mean and then it goes the other way too because you know you got spice who did that song when she was talking about the skin and she pretended to bleach her skin 
Oh yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. reggae artist. Well, what? Well, because okay, because well, Spice is Jamaican, and in Jamaica, it's like a known fact. Like, if you are lighter, you're considered like, like, you consider popping. You consider on top. That's people, crazy. people bleached your skin in Africa and in Jamaica. Um, when they say it's unpopular, it's, it's popular in Hollywood. I don't know. I just don't. I just. Well, I, I guess what I don't understand is why do these said black men say they don't like black women? They don't like our features, but then they go after. Women who want to be black. That just doesn't make everything sense. They black. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, what, why would they be attracted to that if they don't like black women? I think when you see people doing that, though, it must be something wrong within themselves. Like, the, the individual that's pretending to be something that they're not. But then also, uh, the man who will be interested in that. You get what I'm saying? Like, so do you think that that man is insecure? Maybe. Or, you know, like, why else would somebody want fake? You get what I'm saying? Like, come on. Don't even ask that question. 65, 70, I'm making up numbers here, of dudes are dating women they are fake. What do you mean? Why would they uh, like fake? Yeah, those are overly dramatic, dramatically made up numbers. Son, all on IG is a whole bunch of fake numbers. IG is not, for one, for one, all right, I'm going to disagree with you hard there. For one, IG is not real life. Um, <laughs> yo, yeah, that's actually a great quote. So, um, Kimberly says yes. They are insecure. Okay. And then I got my man Paul quoting a Kanye verse before Kim. He had to put that out there. Right. I, I did that. I see what you did there, sir. He said, they made us hate ourselves and love their wealth. And that's true. But I, I guess what I'm just saying is, if we really about... Okay. So let's put it out here. Can you be for the black culture and sleep white? I.e., um, what's the guy's name? That Famous just, Umar question. It is a Umar question, isn't it? What's the guy's name that just interviewed um, Jimmy Fox? Um, Van Jones? Yes. Van Jones is married to a woman. He's getting ready to get a divorce, allegedly. Um, and he is like all of a sudden like woke. Jimmy Fox like runs around and act like he's woke. So can you, he said no, can you be quote unquote pro black and sleep white? Because ironically, he said no. But ironically, there are a lot of pro black black guys that are sleeping white. They claim to be really woke and black and they sell for the culture and sell for the movement, but they love their white wives or white girlfriends. And I don't have a problem with it, but I'm just, I want to know y'all thoughts if you think Umar Johnson was correct for saying that. It is strange to be so for black people and yet what's right beside you is not a shell of yourself. Like, um... Uh... He said, absolutely. I'm not sure what... Who you sleep with has to do with being pro-black. I mean, uh, and and I understand that to a certain extent because now me personally, I know how I feel, right? And everybody that know me know how I feel. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard to be like throwing your fist up in the air all the time, and then, but at the same time, if you're if the goal is truly ending racism, right? You can't perpetuate racism. Nia said it's a represent it's a representation of you. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I just feel like, put it this way, I feel like if Michelle and Barack Obama, let's use them as an example, if Michelle would have been anything other than a black woman, I don't think it would have given Barack the full legitimacy that people barely give him. I do believe that. Like, I think if Barack had a white wife, they're like, oh, well, he's not really black. He's not really down for the culture. But the fact that there were two black educated people in the White House who were from Harvard, it just spoke value. And then this man never cheated on his wife. There have been countless presidents that had affairs with their wife, but he never cheated on his wife. And I think it just was like, wow, who is this black couple? And that's why they had to attack how she looked because they couldn't attack her character. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, and like I said, like I feel like people can love who they love because people can't help who they meet out in work, doing the things that they love to do truly working on their passion and then they fall in love with somebody that don't look like them. That could really happen. Now, um, I think my issue more so typically is when, when you said, hush, hold on, I'm about to get there. Okay. Like, we all had our comments. I was letting you talk. I didn't interrupt you. Go for it. Go Sisters, for it. Sisters, Lord. Lord. No, that's making a generalization. So all right. But no, but I feel like people can love who they love. I think when people love in spite of their, or they, they claim they love someone in spite of their race. Like, I've seen people that be on Facebook all the time. I should call their names out. Y'all Bambas know who y'all are. You gentlemen know who you are, all right? Um, sports fanatics. Anyways, um, that was enough to shout them out. But anyways, like, 
they'll dog women. I see one of them, he puts a post up every day dogging women or whatever, right? And I feel like he really hates himself because he goes out of his way to say bad things about black women and obviously he came from a black woman. Um, so loving somebody outside of your race because I think it's crazy. A uh, quick thing that Kimberly had said was you have to know your past and be true to yourself and accept who you are. And that's a big part. And I think, I'm not saying that she meant it a certain kind of way, but I think that's true with just even if you are going to date outside your race. If you love yourself and accept who you are, then and then you meet somebody and then you love them for who they are just because, not like in spite of yourself. Like you, if, if, like if you with a white woman, you said, oh, I'm with a white woman because I hate all black women, but you a black man, that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. Like I used to, I met white girls in the South that would say stuff like, oh, I can't date no white man. Like, but your father obviously white. What you got against white men? It sounds it's equally crazy. It ain't about black being superior, white being superior. When anybody says it, you could be an Asian man that says, I only date Puerto Rican girls. Actually, I know an Asian chick that says she dated nothing but Port like Spanish men. And it's like, what you gonna oh, get oh, Asian oh, men? Oh, okay, so um, Paul just said, y'all talking about two different things. Barack and Michelle are not sleeping together. They are married and a beautiful example of black excellence. Now, if the question is, can you be pro black and marry white, then the answer is no. Oh, so there's a difference apparently between dating someone outside your race and marrying someone. Because marrying, marrying, I believe is a political statement. I mean, it's been a political thing since the beginning of time. You can't I get around. I think it's a political statement. Back in the day, if you was a peasant, and if you built yourself up enough that you could eventually um, get with someone who was wealthy, your family loved it. You get what I'm saying? So I mean, like. For anyone to get on this post and say otherwise and get mad about it, I'll happily debate you in my free time, debate you right now. But let's throw it out yeah. here, though. Let's throw it out here. And I don't want to belabor, belabor the point. There are black men who will, who will say, like, hey, I tried to date black women, and they wasn't feeling me. And I know black men who were a little corny. I mean, let's just put, let's be honest. And women were overlooking them. So finally, when they, you know, became of age and became an adult, it just so happened by happenstance, someone other than a black woman gave them a chance at love and so should we knock those brothers because no nah, i don't think so sisters I mean, not checking for anime my thing, is, my thing <laughs> is a lot of time people are going to date what's comfortable so i think that's a lot of times how you're going to end up dating someone that looks like you or especially if you come from a family the man the dynamic that's like that is going to happen but for in defense of that brother or any individual right that you you hear this not just with black men or white men or arab women all that you hear a bunch of people saying that you know there's this always this fantasy of what is like uncommon right no matter where you live in the world and then what happens is those people i think tend to want something like that you hear about um nigerian men and women wanting a nigerian man or woman but then living in another area where you know for some reason the dudes that look like them that checking for them and they end up with someone that don't look like them and i feel like in that case it's like well you're gonna do what you gotta do people want companionship they want to be with somebody um and if i mean look at serena williams she tried to date a bunch of black men at some point right and they wanted to keep her a secret and then you have the dude that owns reddit was like i'm feeling you and all of you and wanted to marry her but he should be treating him like a cornball on the show i mean well that's, that's low-key like Treat him so insignificant. I'd be like, dang. Well, and that, but that's something like, in, and in the world we live in, people are learning more about cultures. And one thing you gotta understand is, certain personality types, people from certain areas, they're just not rocking with that. Like, you'll see in some communities where the men are very close to their mothers, and like, and the men are babied in those cultures, right? And sometimes those wives end up competing with their mom to get that affection. I mean, that's a real thing that happens in those communities. Um, and it's one of those things that if you're going to take that on, if you found that your husband, um, for instance, I know I have a lot of Latin friends, and that happens there. Like, Latin, Latin families are a little different. And especially there, it's like, if you're going to marry somebody, know that you're marrying the whole family. Know that mom is going to be immortalized to a certain kind of extent. And if you decide to take that on, that comes, that's part of, you know, XYZ years that get that man to that point. You get what I'm saying? So, so with her acting saying, when she was acting, a lot of brothers ain't rocking with that. I'm just well, saying. I mean, at the end of the day, don't, don't get it twisted. Serena and Venus is still from Compton, period, point blank. Okay. They was born in Compton. Um, so are we saying that, just in conclusion, that if you are a black man, it's okay to sleep outside your race, but when it comes to making that political statement, if you are said pro-black, said woke, said trying to move the advancement of black people, you should 
married black women. I mean, who are we to tell somebody what they should or shouldn't do? I can't tell but somebody. But are we saying that, that, that it looks better favorably, or you just think that there is... What are, what are we exactly saying about this? So, I just this is what I'm saying. and I'm saying it this way because I think the struggle behind the civil rights movement and all these different things is we're trying to end racism because we don't like how it's, it's unfavorable to how we don't get jobs, how we don't manage the basketball teams we play for, or how um, you know we're unlawfully profiled when it comes to the judicial system. So in that, you can't say we're going to correct it here, and then it doesn't start echoing itself in relationships, like how they take place outside of those areas. Now, I think one can be pro-black um, and possibly marry outside their wife. Uh, their race, possibly, or you could be pro anything. More than likely, it's not going to happen though. Um, and then it's going to make people look like people going to side eye you, like, okay, you claim you was this, but now you did this. So I think you can, because you never you never know how someone's going to win your heart. Um, I think what we're saying is, it's just a, not a good look. Period. If you marry outside your race in spite of your race, okay. Right. So and, if you have malice in your heart towards your race. And that is the reason why you go and you seek out other options. That's yeah, because I mean, like for instance, who's and I, I use the uh, Frederick Douglass, right? He was obviously down for the cause, pro-black, wanted blacks to have an pl equal playing field. And then what happened was he ended up marrying a white. And that second marriage was a white woman. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, was he no longer pro-black? What you, you know? Um, is it something? It's something to think about. Um, something else. I, I like him with Pastor Paul. I call him Pastor Paul. He said, what I'm saying is that who you sleep with doesn't make you pro or anti-black. Who you marry does, to me. But I think Juan does have a point uh, when he says that we shouldn't perpetuate racism. And, and that's what I think about. And you get what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to be pro-black, you're going to probably, or pro-anything, you're going to probably deal with your own. But, there's, but pro doesn't necessarily make you anti to another race either. Right? For instance, like, there's some um, political genius I'm pro-black about. But in my pro-blackness, it's never made it hard for me to deal with, um, to have my white friends that I have, to, to get on the battlefield with the white soldiers I fought next to, or to work next to the white people I work to, next to, right? Some of them, shoot, especially like where I work at, and because of where we live, I got a bunch of white friends that work that are way more liberal than me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, I have a lot of, so, well, this area is liberal though. Yeah. When you start going down, when you start going into, down into Virginia, Virginia or going down below the Bible, but that's when things become real. You really start to see racism for what it is. And I think that what I've learned about racism is that a lot of people who feel hatred toward us have actually never really interacted with us exactly. a lot in their life. They believe these thoughts and views based upon how they were taught or based upon the media, which we know the media is skewed. But when you really talk to people who are racist, like literally never in their life do they have opportunities to really interact with black folks and see the opposite of what is perpetuated stereotypes. Like I met one woman and she was like, wow, you speak really well for a black woman. I'm just like, what does that mean? Yeah. And you know, I had to break down some of her stereotypes for her. So I don't know, I think ending racism kind of means, I don't know if there's a way to make these subgroup people, you know, mix with this subgroup people. I don't know if there's a way to do that, but I think that it's about interaction. It's about crossing that line. It's about being willing to meet people where they are and being accepting of it as opposed to allowing your stereotypes to perpetuate how you feel because people, these people be angry for no reason yeah and if, if, if anybody wants to um if i can parallel it look at um like the jewish community right they'd be seriously pro-jew you know what i'm saying pro-jewish all that but at the same time they'll still deal with everybody else work rock with everybody else communicate with everybody else but they'll still marry jewish. a jewish person right for family heritage sake and I think that black people have the right to do that I think white people have the right to do that it's nothing wrong with being pro-white pro-black pro um you know Chinese Japanese um pro-Nigerian you know or you know break it down with them they you know they break it down the tribal like you know pre pro ibu or something like that but here's the thing is you can do that without necessarily hating another race but I do feel like somewhere in America somewhere in this world it's getting too small you have to find a way to bridge the gap and everybody start dealing with each other to some extent. I mean, that has to happen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, well, it just it just does. And I think what we should do is not be overly critical of someone who would date outside the race. 
Especially if it's just like they just found love there. It doesn't seem like, for instance, like, um, and then, you know, he's a bro, so I got to I gotta try to look out for him. Like, think about Amari Harvick, right? He married outside his race. But there's nothing about his speech that would signify to you that he's, like, not down for the culture or he's dating that woman in spite of him. In his mind, that particular woman, I don't, she could have been, I think, any race, any color, any background, but because of what she did for him, right. characteristically and situationally, he's like indebted to that woman and loves her. Right. She just happens to be white. Right. You get what I'm saying? And I think we shouldn't just automatically criticize when that happens and just be like, oh my God, he can't really be down for the culture. No, nah, that ain't well, true. Jimmy Fox, well, well, we'll come back to this. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> hey, look, and this, this is what we could do. Y'all throw out some questions out there and then we'll bring it up to the group. You know, right. like, do y'all feel like you can be pro-black or pro-whatever and still date outside your race or does being pro something make you automatically racist because there are people who are sometimes culturally clueless watching this they hear pro black or even black people that hear pro white and they assume that means racist i don't necessarily mean i don't think that has to mean the case well, you we, what I'm saying? well we can't we we can't be racist anyway we don't have the power i mean from a social construct no we can't right so well anyway we don't want to be belabor you um he said great point this is good y'all uh, a uh, great honest convo. Thank you, Pastor yeah. Paul. Thank you, Pastor Paul. I'm gonna keep on calling you. I know you're not a pastor yet, <laughs> but I'm gonna just start calling you Minister, Pastor Paul. Minister Paul. Hey, he's Minister Paul. But I'm gonna call him Pastor Paul. Matter of fact, if y'all want to hear more from Paul, right? Um, you know what, Anthony, you do need to come back to the show for real, for real. We need to make that happen real quick. Anthony, who's Anthony? Anthony? Oh yeah. Anthony. ready at the time but uh, and we might have some work for you because we about to start doing our man on the street stuff so I don't want you to think I forgot that conversation bro we gonna definitely do that because it's already coming so we got you and Paul I'm happy that you received that brother pastor and before we bow out with some good music like you always do yeah happy Veterans Day to all of my veterans I have a brother that's a veteran yeah Juan is a veteran. Shout out um, Anthony that's on here. Actually, he Anthony has a video a yes, he does. about PTSD and so um, the various things about veterans. So shout out to all of our veterans. With. Play some good tunes before we go. Yep. What you got for the people? Surprise, surprise. I got a little something for them before I go too. Because Paul was on here, we shout out to Paul out a lot. If you go back to the YouTube page and you see the men's panel on relationships. Yes, Paul is on there. Paul dropped. Like all kind good, of bombs and dimes and jewels. Right. Um, and my man Devlin Watkins, who we're going to be hooking up with pretty soon here. Yeah. He was on there, so check that out. And um, also, Anthony was on. We actually uh, played. Uh, did we play the whole movie? We, 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 we played we play, we play, we play, we play, Yeah. Yeah. And um, you could go find him and then watch the whole thing. We got all the information there, so make sure you check that out. And yeah, shout out all the veterans. Um, if y'all haven't heard of this group, they don't. I feel like they bring in soul music from a group standpoint back to the front stage. Um, it's Next Town Down. Okay. They're the ones that did that whole montage to the Temptations. They do a bunch of like covers, but they their EP dropped and it dropped um last month. All right. Um, and it's dope. And the song that I'm gonna play is called Bounce. What's up, Spin? Um, and it's dope. Young boys, it's five of them. Young ladies, they good looking dudes. You know what I'm saying? I think one day my daughter gonna be screaming at one of their concerts. So I hope y'all enjoy this. And um, it's the Nitty Gritty Show, and we out. You know what I'm saying? It was good having y'all. I'll be posting the show to uh, YouTube if you missed it. You know? They talk. They like it. Cause you're really